Have you ever tried to calculate the fallout of a nuclear warhead detonating inside a boxing ring? That is roughly the energy output we're dealing with today. If Thor and Superman collided at full speed, the kinetic energy release wouldn't just break bones, it would shatter the local atmosphere. But we aren't here for fan theories, we're here for the physics. Today, we're taking the comic book versions of the God of Thunder and the Man of Steel, stripping away the plot armor and analyzing their biology, material science, and energy output to answer one question. Who actually wins? To understand who survives this fight, we first have to look at the upper limits of their strength. In the comics, Superman once bench-pressed the weight of the Earth for five straight days without breaking a sweat. The mass of the Earth is roughly 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. That is six sextillion metric tons. To put that in perspective, if you strap the Saturn V rocket, the most powerful engine humans ever built, to every square inch of the planet's surface, you still wouldn't match the force Superman generated just to keep that weight moving. That is a force output in the range of 10 to the 25th Newtons. Now look at Thor. His most famous strength feat involves lifting the Midgard Serpent, a creature large enough to wrap around the equator. While a snake that size is technically lighter than the entire planet, the physics get complicated because the serpent was magically anchored to the world. Thor wasn't just lifting biological mass, he was fighting a gravitational lock. If we treat that anchor as a localized gravity well, Thor was essentially deadlifting a black hole's event horizon. But Superman's feat is cleaner from a pure physics standpoint because it relies on muscle, not magic. But striking power isn't just how much you can lift. It's about what you can survive. This brings us to material science. Asgardian biology is fascinating. We know from the lore that Asgardian tissue is three times denser than human tissue. That means Thor weighs roughly 640 pounds of primarily muscle and bone. His skin isn't just tough. It's a high-density molecular weave capable of withstanding the pressure of a neutron star. When Thor takes a hit, he relies on simple material hardness. Like a tank's armor plating, Superman's different. His durability isn't just density, it's a bioelectric aura. Think of it like a personal force field generated by his cells. When a bullet hits Superman, it doesn't just bounce off his skin. It loses all kinetic energy instantly upon contacting this field. In physics terms, his body acts as a perfect energy sink dispersing impact across his entire surface area rather than a single point. This is crucial because it means piercing him requires overcoming that dispersion limit. If Thor hits him, the force isn't just taken by Superman's jaw. It's distributed instantly across his entire molecular structure. Then there's the magic variable. In science, we don't do magic. We have to quantify Mjolnir's enchantment as exotic matter manipulation. The hammer isn't just heavy. It manipulates the gravitons around it. When Thor throws it, he isn't throwing a metal block. He's throwing a distortion in space-time. If Superman tries to catch it, he isn't fighting weight. He's fighting the fixed position of the universe itself. This gives Thor a distinct advantage in force application. Superman applies force through biological leverage. Thor applies force through fundamental cosmic constants. However, Raw stats are only half the battle. These numbers exist in a vacuum, but fights happen in environments. We need to see how these biological tanks operate when we introduce friction, atmosphere, and the laws of thermodynamics. Now that we have the raw numbers, we need to see how they apply when atmospheric drag becomes a factor. Scenario A, open field on Earth. Let's drop these two titans into a standard Earth environment, say a cornfield in Kansas, and hit the start button. The first thing you have to realize is that on Earth, physics is a third combatant, and it hates both of them. The atmosphere is thick, gravity is constant, and friction is a nightmare. We often ignore these factors in movies, but in a scientific breakdown, they determine the pacing of the fight. Start with speed. This is where math gets brutal for the God of Thunder. We know Thor can travel faster than light when Mjolnir pulls him through space, but combat speed, the ability to throw a punch or dodge one, is a different metric. 
Superman operates in nanoseconds. His brain processes information so fast that a standard human heartbeat would feel like it takes a century. In the time it takes Thor's neurons to fire the signal, swing hammer. Superman has theoretically analyzed Thor's stance, checked his pulse, and thrown 300 punches. From a neurological standpoint, Thor is a fighting statue that can teleport. But here's the catch. On Earth, speed kills the environment. If Superman tries to blitz Thor at Mach 500 at sea level, he creates a fusion reaction. The air molecules simply cannot move out of the way fast enough. They compress, heat up, and turn into plasma. Before Superman's fist even connects, the shock wave alone would vaporize everything within a 10-mile radius. This is a massive tactical disadvantage for Superman. He cares about collateral damage. He can't move at his top speed without nuking the very planet he's trying to protect. Thor, historically, is a bit more reckless, but even he is limited by the air resistance dragging on his cape and armor. Now, let's talk about the impact. Superman's ultimate weapon here is the infinite mass punch. It relies on the theory of relativity. As an object approaches the speed of light, its mass increases towards infinity. If Superman accelerates his fist to 99.9% .9 of light speed, that fist effectively hits with the mass of a white dwarf star. In terms of pure kinetic energy transfer, this should turn Thor into Asgardian paste. But remember that magic variable we discussed? Thor's durability isn't logical. He has tanked energy blasts from celestials, beings who create galaxies. When Superman lands that infinite mass punch, he isn't hitting a static object. He's hitting a biological anomaly that defies conservation of energy. And Thor has a counter, lightning. We aren't talking about a static shock. Thor summons bolts that can reach temperatures exceeding 30,000 Kelvin, five times hotter than the surface of the sun. But the heat isn't the problem for Superman. The origin is. Superman's bioelectric aura is evolved to handle physical trauma and radiation specifically solar radiation. It has no evolutionary defense against magical energy signatures. When Thor calls down lightning, it bypasses that bioelectric field almost entirely. So, on Earth, we have a stalemate. Superman's faster, but he can't use his full speed without destroying the planet. Thor's slower, but his magical attacks penetrate Superman's defenses better than physical punches do. The atmosphere is literally burning around them. The ground is turning to glass, and neither can unleash their full potential without ending the world they're standing on. To get a real winner, we have to change the variables. We need to take away the air, take away the gravity, and see what happens when they can really let loose. Scenario B. Deep Space Combat when we move this fight to deep space, the physics of the battlefield shift from fluid dynamics to orbital mechanics. In the vacuum, there is no air resistance to create drag or heat. This means terminal velocity no longer exists. If Superman accelerates, he keeps accelerating until he hits a relativistic wall. But the biggest factor here isn't the lack of air. It's the abundance of radiation. You have to look at Superman as a living photovoltaic cell. On Earth, the atmosphere filters out a significant percentage of solar radiation. In deep space, he gets the raw, unfiltered spectrum. We call this the solar battery effect. As he gets closer to the sun, his power absorption follows the inverse square law, meaning if he cuts the distance to the sun in half, his energy intake quadruples. If Superman decides to fly directly into the sun, a maneuver known as the sun dip, his strength doesn't just increase linearly, it goes logarithmic. He effectively gains infinite stamina and heat projection capabilities. In this environment, he isn't just fighting Thor, he is weaponizing a star. Thor, however, faces a distinct mechanical disadvantage in zero gravity. We need to talk about propulsion. Superman flies by manipulating his own gravitational field or using telekinesis. Thor relies on Mjolnir. To fly, Thor throws the hammer and holds onto the strap letting the hammer's momentum pull him. In physics terms, this is linear propulsion. 
To change direction, he has to stop, swing, and throw again. In the vacuum of space, where angular momentum is preserved perfectly, Superman can fly circles around Thor. Thor is a rocket trying to dogfight a UFO. He has thrust, but he lacks the agility. Then we have the range game. Superman's heat vision is focused thermal radiation. In a vacuum, heat transfer can only happen through radiation, not convection, which makes cooling down incredibly difficult. If Superman blasts Thor, that heat has nowhere to go. Thor's armor would begin to cook him alive. However, Thor has the God Blast. This is his nuclear option. Literally, it is an omnidirectional release of his life force channeled through Mjolnir. Unlike Superman's lasers, which require aim, the God Blast is an expanding sphere of destruction. If Thor can trigger this, Superman's speed advantage becomes irrelevant because you can't dodge an explosion that encompasses the entire battlefield. Superman just has to stay out of range, pepper him with heat vision, and wait for the God of Thunder to suffocate. Superman dominates near the sun because the environment fuels him while it slowly kills Thor. But a true scientific analysis requires neutrality. We can't just give Superman a limitless power source and call it a fair fight. What happens when we take the batteries out? What happens when we strip away the yellow sun and drop them in the dark? Welcome to Scenario C, a rogue planet drifting in the interstellar void. No stars, no yellow sun radiation, just cold rock. Here, Superman is no longer a generator, he's a battery. Every time he uses heat vision or moves at super speed, he's burning stored kilojoules that he cannot replace. It creates a depletion curve. In high intensity combat, his power levels will drop linearly over time. If the fight lasts 10 minutes, he's a god. If it lasts 10 hours, he's just a very strong alien. If it lasts 10 days, he's mortal. Thor does not have this problem. As Guardian physiology acts as an internal perpetual motion machine, while Superman is worrying about his fuel gauge, Thor's just getting warmed up. In a war of attrition, the physics of magic trump the physics of biology. The longer the fight goes, the probability of a Thor victory approaches 100%. Thor is a warrior born in a culture of gladiator combat. He aims for the head. In a split-second exchange, the fighter who hesitates to calculate safety margins is statistically more likely to lose initiative. Thor's willingness to unleash lethal magical energy immediately gives him a tactical edge in the opening microseconds. So, who is the champion? We've analyzed the strength, the durability, the speed, and the environments. If the fight happens in deep space near a yellow sun, Superman wins. The energy input is simply far too high for Thor to match. The solar battery effect creates a gap in raw power that no amount of Viking grit can bridge. If the fight happens in a red sun environment or on a magical realm, Thor wins. His durability and magical damage output bypass Superman's defenses, and his stamina outlasts the Kryptonian battery. But in a neutral environment, like Earth, the math points to one decisive factor, speed. Thor is incredibly powerful, but he needs time to think, swing, and react. Superman thinks in auto seconds. Thor has thousands of years of combat experience compared to Superman's decades. That experience gap usually bridges physical disparities, but here, the physical disparity in speed is just too wide to bridge with skill alone. Before Thor's synapses can transmit the electrical signal to close his hand around Mjolnir, Superman can land a thousand blows with the mass of a freight train. The kinetic energy transfer of a relativistic strike outweighs the magical durability of Asgardian armor. Thor has the power to kill Superman, but Superman has the speed to ensure Thor never gets the chance to use it. By the laws of physics, speed is the ultimate force multiplier. The winner is Superman. If you want to see the math behind a Hulk vs. Doomsday breakdown, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss the next analysis.